If you're an indie game developer, then this has probably happened to you. You start working on your dream project, full of excitement with the wealth of possibility that your idea has. However, as the weeks and months go by, you begin to get bogged down with endless features, systems and bugs. Every game is complex, and if you don't have a good system for keeping track of it all, then it's inevitable that the project will begin to overwhelm you. So in this video, I'm going to tell you about the system which I believe to be the best for solo developers and small teams, and the system which I use to stay organised as an indie developer. This system is known as Kanban. And I'm sure many of you have tried using to-do lists to track your work on an indie project, and then come up against the problem with using such a basic system. As you discover more bugs or flesh out the systems that need to be built, a number of issues and the relationships between them quickly becomes far too complex to make sense of with a simple to-do list. This is where Kanban comes in. So what is Kanban exactly? Well, the simplest way to think about it is the next step up from a to-do list. So any given task in a to-do list can either be in two states, either it is done or it's not done. So a to-do list is in essence a binary system. Now with Kanban, basically we say that a task can have more than two states. So the simplest version of this is to instead give a task three possible states, either to do, in progress or complete. Now that tasks can have multiple states, we need a better way to lay them out. So instead of a list, we make each task into a card and then lay them out in columns like this depending on their state. Then, when a card changes state, we can simply move it from one column to the next. And that's it. This is the essence of Kanban. Of course, you can add additional columns to represent other states that you might want a task to be in. For example, instead of a single to-do column, you might want to split this into your backlog of tasks and then add a separate up next column for tasks that you're planning on tackling soon. Now that we understand what Kanban is, how do we implement it? Originally, Kanban would have been done with physical cards, but these days most people are using digital solutions. Firstly, I'm going to show you a minimal setup using Trello, which is great for a first time Kanban user. Then I will show you a more complex setup in Notion, including a few ways Kanban can be extended to work even better for your needs, as well as the exact setup that I'm using on my indie project. So here we are in Trello. Here at the top, we can enter the titles of our columns, so to return to our simple example, let's enter to do, in progress and done. Then under each column, we can begin adding cards. Once you've created the card, it can be dragged between columns. You can also add a description to the card as well as comments, useful if you're working on a team. You can also add checklists to a task if you would like, which is helpful to implement a simple form of subtasking. Finally, you're able to add labels to tasks, which allows you to filter by these labels. That's an overview of the main features of Trello. Overall, it's a really great tool, having all the essential features to implement Kanban, and I'd really recommend trying it with your own project if you're new to the methodology. Now, let's move over to Notion. Notion is an extremely powerful tool that can be used for much more than just issue tracking, which I'm going to talk about in a future video. But for now, let's just focus on how Notion can be used to implement a Kanban board. Firstly, I will show you how to set up a simple Kanban board in Notion that is equivalent to what can be done in Trello. Open an empty page in Notion and then type forward slash board view. Then select the board view option and then on this screen select new database. As you can see, Notion defaults to creating the three state Kanban board which I described before. Then you can add new tasks like so, add new columns and everything else you need for a basic Kanban setup. You can also add descriptions and comments to the tasks by clicking on a card. If you want to see the descriptions on the board page, then you can click the hamburger menu here, then go to layout, card preview, and then select page content. Now, this setup is great if you're new to Kanban, but once you've been using it for a while, or if you're working in a team, you'll soon come upon its limitations. One issue is that when you have a large number of tasks, your board can become crowded making it difficult to find the task that you're looking for. One way we can alleviate this is by adding additional properties to the tasks. For example, we might want to tag tasks by their type, for example, feature, bug or optimization, or alternatively by which domain they affect, for example, gameplay, art or UI. This is something that we can easily add to our Notion board. 
Click the hamburger menu, go to properties, and then select new property. Notion supports many different types of properties, be it text, numbers, or dates. But for this property, we want to choose select, which is essentially a mutually exclusive tag. Let's give it a sensible name, for example, type. Then we can add the different types by clicking new option. You also have the option to color each type however you like. Now, under properties, click the eye icon next to the type property to make it visible on the board. Now, when you make a new task, you have the option to add a type to it. Now that we have these types, we can filter them and sort by them. You can add a new filter by clicking here. Another great way to use these types is by creating an additional view for them by clicking here. Then, on each view, set up a different filter. Give each view a name reflecting the type that it filters by, and then you have an easy way to look at different types of tasks. Now, if you like, you can add another property for the domain of your tasks. Now you have a powerful way to filter your tasks so you can just focus in on the tasks that you're interested in. Another feature that would be great to have with our Kanban board is the ability to add a hierarchy to the tasks, or in other words, to be able to mark tasks as being parents or children of one another, and then easily view the tasks in this hierarchy. Luckily, this is something that can also be easily done in Notion. The great thing about Notion is that pages are recursive, meaning that a page for a task can itself be a Kanban board. And what's more, this board can also use the same database. This means that we can set up each task to be its own Kanban board for all of its subtasks, meaning that on your main board, you only need to have the high level tasks, and then you can click on a given task to show the board of the subtasks relating to that parent task. This greatly reduces the number of tasks you see on your main board when working on a large project, which I find makes it much less overwhelming. Now let's have a look at how we can set this up. Firstly, we need to add some additional relation properties to our tasks. These relationships will define whether a task is a parent or a child of another task. Go to the properties view again, and then add a new relation property. Link it to your tasks database. Name it something sensible like parent, and then enable separate directions and name this opposite direction child. Now in the properties view, make this parent and child relation visible. Now when you create a new task, you can define another task that should be the task's parent. Next, we will set up the recursive Kanban views that I described before. Firstly, we need to create a template. To do this, create an empty task, then click on it and select create a template. Now, set up a board view of your task database as I described before. One additional step that you need to take is to add a filter to your board to only show tasks whose parents are the templated task. Finally, go to your main board and then add a filter to only show tasks that don't have a parent. This ensures that our main board will only show the root tasks. Now when we click on a new task, we can click on our template to insert a Kanban board for this task. Then we can insert tasks into this board and they will automatically be marked as a child of the task. All of these child tasks live in the same database as the parent task, but they're only visible on this particular board and they will not show up on the main board. If you need to add a second level of subtasks to one of these subtasks, then you can simply click on the task and add another board. You can make this as simple or as complex as you need. Although in practice, I find that you rarely need to have more than one layer of subtasks. In fact, this is exactly what I do on my own indie project, Growth. Here, for example, you can see on my main board, I just have the high level features like saving and loading, music and sound, and localization. Then, if I click on one of these tasks, it brings up a separate Kanban board for all of the subtasks related to that main feature. This greatly simplifies the main board and means that I can just get a high level overview of the progress on my project without needing to worry about the exact details of each feature. That's all I have for you now, but of course, thanks to the highly customizable nature of Notion, it's possible to set it up to do much more, and I'm confident that there'll be a way to set it up. If you found this video helpful and you'd like to see more like it, make sure to subscribe. If you have any ideas for other ways you could extend this setup, I'd love to hear them, so be sure to let me know in the comments. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.